After asking some good questions on the internet, I found that this cab is 90 inches from the front to the back. In 164 scale, 90 inches is an inch and 7 sixteenths. This cab, as it stands, measures an inch and a half presently. Once we add on the back, we're adding in another sixteenth of an inch. Therefore, what I want to do is cut off an eighth of an inch off this cab so once the back is attached and dry fit, we can measure it and see if it's actually 1 and 7 sixteenths inches. I'm going to use the disc sander to take off uh, little bits at a time so I don't take off too much at once. That and I can keep the sides level as we go. Let's get to work. Now we'll go ahead and test fit our Now we'll go ahead and test fit the back of the cab to the front and see where we land. And we are really, really close. Inch and seven sixteenths ought to be right good there. Okay, we're going to leave that as it is and continue on. So the next step now, and you'll notice that I went ahead and uh, sanded off the top and, and smoothed up these edges. I did have one spot here where I gouged a little bit with my saw blade. Not a problem. We can fill that in with body filler. This part up here where the visor would normally be is really, really thin, but we're going to cover it with a visor anyway, so I'm not concerned about that. As I said, next step is we're going to go to paint stripper and get all the paint off of this, and then we'll begin moving the axle forward and the body work back here. What I've done here is I put the two pieces together, held them nice and tight. You have two natural lines in which you can put these together to make sure that it's going to be lined up properly on the cab. There's this line, there's this long line here across the top, and then there's another matching one on the back of the cab. So you put those together like so, and then you know that it's proper all the way across on both sides. Then what I did was took a mark with a pencil. After I lined them up, marked them both sides, draw, drew a straight line. Now I'm going to cut this top off and then I'll use the sander to go ahead and true it up. Now we can see that our line is, uh, we can almost sand a little bit more off. But I think I'm going to leave that because I can do it by hand and not worry about taking too much off. I'm pretty happy with the way that's turned out. That's going to be good. Next, we come in with a sanding pad on a Dremel and take off this part right here. Uh, it's an old door, uh, a die cast line from a door, and there's one on both sides. Both of those need to be removed. I'm using a sanding pad for my. I'm using a sanding pad for my Dremel. This will take that die cast off well. You'll notice that there's a bit of a groove right there. I'm going to fill that in with body filler when it gets, when I start putting this back together, I'll fill that in and then sand it smooth so there's no line there. Now we can come in and cut a new groove. For the wheel well, we're going to move this forward because this is a setback axle truck. So we're going to see here on the real truck, there is a bit of a curve right behind where the fender goes, right behind the headlight. There's a bit of a curve right behind the headlight, a flat spot below the door, and then another curve. So on the model, what we'll do is we're going to come in right here where it kind of breaks toward the front. We're going to put an angle with our Dremel and then cut all of this out flat so we have a good surface to work with because we'll put a piece of plastic back in here to uh, fill in this gap once we're done.
As you can see, I made a mistake here. I cut too far forward or much farther forward than I really wanted to. Uh, so I have a little cut line there. That's not gonna be a huge problem, I don't think. I can fill that in with JB Weld and kind of make a new, uh, make it look reasonable. Uh, if a guy were to make that same mistake, you could just curve this all the way forward here and you could use a sanding barrel to make a nice curve here and that would actually take care of it as well. For this part of the operation, I'm going to use my sanding drum. After consulting some photos online, I went ahead and I, I have decided I'm going to go ahead and uh, make this curved right here. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side and bring, I'm going to bring this curve forward and then I'm going to get into this and make a match on both sides. So now we have a nice flat area right here. So what we'll do is we'll glue in a piece of plastic right here. We're gonna leave it slightly behind this flat part right here so it resembles the real truck. Then we'll glue a piece of plastic in this area and then we'll make a curve on the back side of that uh, to resemble, again, the fender well. And then we can come in with body filler and cover some of this area up in here, any of these unattractive lines. I'm gonna cut my part a little oversized I find it's easier to work with if it's uh, just a hair too big for this particular purpose. Make a mark, and then we'll cut that out. We can file it down once we've got it glued in place and it's nice and solid. And I am going to some trouble to make sure it's flush with the die cast. Okay, so that does look really ugly, but when we're done with it, it's going to look fine. I've done this before just doing this uh, this exact way and it does turn out really really nice Okay Next we're getting close to putting the back of the cab on We're gonna mix up some JB weld. We'll put the uh, cab on and then get that all lined up So what I normally do on this is I use this particular glue uh, to just to temporarily put it in place. This is not permanent. Uh, what this does is gives me just enough time to get everything lined up perfectly the way I want it. Make sure everything's nice and flush. Okay, and I think my cab is bent just a little bit, so we're gonna have to bend that out. There we go. And I'm trying to bend that die cast a little bit so we have nice clean lines. So you'll notice this line here lines up, matches on the other side. Um, this, we can use some body filler in here to kind of clean this and hide uh, our seam right here. And then, 
Uh, we're getting close to, so what we'll do then is um, we can put a piece of plastic on the top. You could use brass if you want to put the roof cap on if you have some brass.